let's uh, look at what some described as Kamata Kamata Fridays or weekends where you'd see arrests mid late Friday evening or early morning Saturday. And so the suspects spend a night or two behind bars before bail hearing. What informed that kind of um, operating in that kind of way? Because that's those who looked at it as interfering with the rights of these suspects, forcing them in that kind of a situation. Um, I think that question would best be placed with the DCI, mm -hmm. but I think it's also the challenges that we've had. Um, I mean, um, for example, NYS, uh, we had about 50 people, um, mm -hmm. getting them all, um, and we've not gotten all of them to date. Uh, there's some warrants still out. Right. Um, so we took that into consideration and many other factors. Mm -hmm. Um, um, and I think it's legal. There's nothing illegal about it. Um, and I've always asked my, my, myself, why is it that because we've arrested certain individuals, these questions arise? When we know that there are youths out there, unajua mm. msako. Yeah. It's always on a Thursday or on Friday. Mm. Uh, they are held from the streets and put in over the weekend. Why has that not been an issue? Mm -hmm. Why is it an issue today because of certain individuals? Uh, I think Kenyans have always known in the common monarchy that yeah. Monday. Monday. Yeah. Okay. Then there's also a different debate in terms of there's a judgment rendered by Justice Career, if I'm not wrong, um, in a murder case. Um, where the parties were allowed to, uh, it's called what, ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution, and Camels were involved. And some have wondered how far, especially in cases of murder and rape, for instance, someone, a child minor will be raped, and then the parents go agree, exchange Camels, and then they go get married. How far can this go in your view? You know, because it's it's quite at some point, especially in some like rape of a minor, get married, the adults exchange this. Fortunately, this happens in my community. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not why you asked <laughs> no, the I question have... for it. But um, I think under the Sexual Offences Act, it's very clear mm. that there's no ADR. Mm, that's out of the question. Murder? Well, there have been instances where if the judiciary agrees, but um, for me personally, um, uh, my 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 and my thinking and that of my team is that uh, <clears throat> this cannot be entertained, uh, especially in serious and heinous crimes like murder, um, considering that it's not. It's not about the families. It's, if you look at all the cases, it's the repub republic versus so-and-so. Uh, so as a government and, and uh, as ODPP, um, I think in terms of murder, um, the, it's out of question. Yeah, because we're seeing a little bit of that in one of the cases recently. You know, the former Garissa CEC, Idris Mukhtar, um, the governor was arrested, questioned, released, and now this talk of this kind of arrangement happening, there was a fundraising over the weekend to raise... That's, that, that's, that's out of question. Okay. And I can tell you that it's outright. Not, not if question. the evidence is there, whether you're a governor or a pauper, if you've murdered, uh, then you'll face the law. Okay. Yeah. Even if they seek whatever other measures... They, they, can, they can seek whatever other measures um, they want. Um, there is issues of, for example, plea bargaining. Uh, I must be clear on that. Yeah. But the first requirement for plea bargaining is that you plead guilty. That's where we start. Mm. Yeah. You mm. spoke about the public being patient on the investigations around the Sharon Otieno case. Yes. The DCI talked about three days we'll settle this. And of course, there's been a lot of anger because of the nature of 
just how the events unfolded. Um, the governor, of course, six days after the body was discovered, and a lot of what had happened is when you know, he was... Yeah. What we've done, mm -hmm. and purposely, is we've moved the case from Migori mm -hmm. to Nairobi. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, because we noted um, that those charged on the ground were maybe unable, there was interference. Um, <clears throat> that's why you see we brought the suspects. There's another suspect on the way now and will be brought here in Nairobi mm -hmm. and um, away from interference. Yeah. The investigations are ongoing. Uh, you know, there's issues of DNA. Um, <clears throat> Um, you know, we have to get warrants to look into the phones and how they were used. Um, so there's quite a number of things. We, maybe the DCI thought it was a close and shut case. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, I've always argued that um, we should not go by emotions. Investigations have to take time. Um, and, and they cannot be driven. Uh, by uh, uh, emotions on the grounds. They have to be driven by the evidence. Uh, and if we think that there isn't sufficient evidence and we need to work on, on the evidence, mm -hmm. then fine. We will look at the different theories that have been advanced as to how this occurred. Yeah. We are looking into that. Um, it will take a bit of time, but we will conclude it. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I assure you that we will prosecute. Right. On the flip side, on the defense, you know, the suspect had been detained for six days. Magistrate ordered he be released, but a case was made for him to be detained for a further 14 days as investigations continue. And so, and it was granted. But the argument still would be, why prosecute before you have investigated? Or why charge? We, 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 we were not prosecuted, but in this... You know, we have to look at the public interest also. If I think, if we left this individual out there, one, we cannot, um, um, we cannot guarantee his security, for example. Two, um, <clears throat> I think having looked at the environment, uh, we considered that um, there would be interference. Uh, we didn't want another situation of what occurred with the coroner's case. Um, <clears throat> And there are a lot of other factors that we took into consideration. Yeah. There are instances when you will need custodial, uh, custodial period to, to, so that you can undertake the investigations. Mm -hmm. That has been done. It has been done on uh, terrorism you know, cases and other organized crime cases. Yeah. And such heinous crimes also, I think, uh, if we ask and we are granted, then the, the courts are convinced that we need that. It took six days for the governor to be um, questioned and yet I mean there were all these things about that there was we cannot just just because mm -hmm. some few individuals say that he did it mm -hmm. um, we have to look at what we have yeah. uh, I understand the crime scene was tampered uh, that's why it took a bit of time okay. um, <clears throat> but at the end of it we, we got him to come and write a statement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So being guided by the evidence you investigate. I, and I think that's the best way. That's the best Otherwise, way. Um, we will victimize people. Um, and, and remember, you know, prosecution is not always about uh, getting convictions or prosecuting people. Uh, the ODPP, I think, needs to look at. Yeah. Uh, this is about taking other uh, people's uh, civil liberties. What is informing the cases you, you take up, you choose to go into? Because on any given day, I imagine that at this moment, you know, there are crimes happening all over the world, I mean, all over the yeah. country. So Just what informs... We, you know, we don't choose. Yeah. We look at the evidence. Uh, there's a test that we look at, a threshold. We look at the public interest, uh, whether there's a prima facie case, whether the evidence is strong enough. Um, we don't, you know, you don't choose cases. You choose, I mean, you, you prosecute um, what has evidence, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, but if the question is, do we have a strategy um, uh, when it comes to corruption? Uh, I'm, you know, I think this, the, my strategy is that um, we prosecute. Um, first of all, um, 
cases that get that and, and matters that come to us mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to corruption. But in terms of bringing the attention to the public, um, so that they understand that uh, the seriousness of, of the cause, mm -hmm. um, we have looked at the different sectors uh, that have been impacted um, negatively, uh, especially those that affect our economy, yeah. our national security, mm -hmm. and also our social and political um, um, you know, fabric. So, yeah. um, and if you look at the cases that we've brought, so for example, NYS, um, it had an impact on the youth, and it was continuously and continu mm -hmm. uh, continuously, um, and, uh, and, and, and we purposely in, took a great interest in it mm -hmm. and, and guided the investigations. If you look at the Kenya Power and Lighting, uh, it's about our energy sector, mm -hmm. the impact that it has had on our economy. Uh, inflated bills, um, you know, faulty um, transformers. Um, <clears throat> everybody knows about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, if we want to achieve the, the big four, um, I think the energy sector is a very important sector. Yeah. If you look at the cabs and you marry it into manufacturing, um, um, you know, counterfeit goods affects our manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. um, and we expedited that because of, of that. Um, if you look at, um, at the maize, uh, we considered a strategic uh, um, <clears throat> reserves and food, and the effect that may scandal had or has. Uh, and there are more cases on that coming, just like NYS, we're going to have phases. Um, so we have a strategy. We're not just haphazard as some people would want to think. Right. Uh, we, are, we are also very soon, um, but soon would be maybe in the matter of uh, one or two months, uh, we will also be focusing on the health sector. So strategy, largely, broadly is described, and you break it down as also focusing on the big four agenda. Well, focusing on the big four, and, and as I said, our economy and the national security of yeah. this country. Yeah. Okay. Um, Those that have a great impact and that exacerbates yeah. uh, all the other threats that we face. Okay, let me ask you this at that point, because some would hear that. And of course, the president has expressed political support and will uh, on the war against corruption. And there are those who wonder, is ODPP operating under the behest of the president? So are they here, you've aligned your prosecutions on the big four. Is he being directed or led in priority of cases by what uh, the president would seem important. What do you tell those people who have those concerns? We are called the government of Kenya at the end of it. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have different arms of government uh, that are independent. Um, the constitution is very clear. We are independent, uh, but we are part and parcel. We are also interdependent. Uh, uh, you know, and I cannot work in a vacuum. That's, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. um, if it's independence, I've prosecuted uh, PSCs. Yeah. We're going to prosecute CSCs. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, CSCs. Uh, we've prosec I mean, we've taken the DCJ. Um, in terms of independent, I believe that we are independent. Um, you are going after the bad guys and re trying to recover assets, trace the money where it is. But let's talk a little bit about IFMIS. And the Auditor General has flagged it out as a pretty much porous system. In fact, when I looked at the report, he was talking about a system that could be accessed by unknown people from unknown locations numerous number of times so that it's free for all. And so far, the step we've seen the Ministry of Treasury take, um, uh, Treasury has been to write to the various accounting officers on 
they will be looking into the passwords. So not much has happened in fixing such a system. So that one would wonder, as you're doing your work, do you feel and get a sense that there's someone else dropping the ball so that we're making one step forward, recovering money, but as we speak, we're losing much more that we'll start hearing of scandals in a few days? You paint a very bad picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, that report was very bad. Well, um, um, I think I, I, I also raised my concerns during NYS, mm -hmm. um, and uh, this matter was brought to the attention of the Treasury. I'm aware of programs that they're, they're, they're engaged with in terms of re-looking really at how IFMIS mm -hmm. um, is accessed, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe doing upgrades, yeah. I'm aware of that, and I think they, they announced that. Yeah. Um, so it's not that there's nothing happening, there is. Yeah. Just like the banking sector, uh, we did raise it, and I think CBK picked it up immediately and uh, took, took the action. And the same is being done with IFMIS. Um, also, the Sani um, fuss, as we've been hearing over the demolitions, yes. the green <laughs> mamba, you're wondering what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, so. Tajmo. Tajmo. You know, you know there, is a, there is a misconception here. We, we, we are not involved in, in the demolitions. Not to that extent. I would ask to the extent that would, as ODPP, go after government? Yes, and, and I've, already, I've already instructed the DCI uh, to undertake investigations. I think they're ongoing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because that's it. I've, I've, I've already done that. Mm -hmm. We're going to look into that. We're going to look at all officials who gave um, um, their approvals um, and how they did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if they flouted the rules and uh, um, there was a crime, we'll prosecute them. Yeah. IBC has been quite um, dramatic scene of events in as far as leadership for the past one year playing out in public. But that aside. September the 1st, the Supreme Court finds there were illegalities, irregularities. The DPP at the time indicated there would be investigations. And a lot of what we see playing out, some suspect is touching on those illegalities. So is this a matter you're seized of, of IBC? I think the investigations are ongoing, okay. both by the DCI and the ESCC. The file has not come to me, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm aware of the investigation. As you continue with your work, uh, and your team, are you confident this anti-graft campaign will bear fruit? Because there's still the skeptics who say that especially when it comes to senior officials, public officials, things always get a little bit uh, trickier. So of course we wait for the various cases to go on, but are you confident that you will succeed where many have failed? Um, I'm hopeful. What you? Okay, hopeful. Yeah, I'm yeah. hopeful, I'm determined, um, and with the prayers, yours and Kenyans, I think um, um, I, will, I will succeed. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, Kenyans have also sensed that there's a difference. Yeah. Yeah, and we're determined. Okay. We're determined to make sure that um, there's a change for the better. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Amata, as we bring this to a close, uh, the young girl who was murdered, yes. uh, magistr yeah, magistrate's daughter. Of course, there are investigations ongoing, but there's a concern. What if, you know, it was because of a correlation with work or judgment or something of the sort? In your line of work, um, I wonder, have you faced threats, your family? Because you really rub many people the wrong way. In terms of threats, um, I've had threats, um, but this is not the first time for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I worked in the NIS. Um, yeah. I've had threats from uh, Al Shabaab and Al Qaeda, both me and my family. Those threats are still in existence. Uh, I think they, um, Al Shabaab renewed the threats against me. Um, um, but there are also subtle threats. Um, you've seen that with the NLC case. Mm -hmm. 
and my my father's name has been popping up suddenly interestingly um, they didn't do that much earlier you know, when they were in office but suddenly there's a lot of interest um, and I think it's it's a way of telling me that uh, you know you are, you stop um, but one thing um, and I want them to understand is that I believe in God and I believe that my destiny is only determined by God um, and no human so if I'm destined to die at a certain time or point then I will there's nothing that I can do about it we all have an expiry date and frankly if I have to die for this cause um, uh, there's nothing better uh, and, and I'm determined um, and I want them to know that um, for my country and for God I will do this and I'm determined well said um, what do Kenyans expect you've just six months in you have a long way to go what should they expect from Mr. Haji <laughs> Expectations are pretty high already right now. No, okay, and I don't want to. <laughs> so. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> don't make them any higher. In the sense that, um, let, let me deliver, and then. And that's um, what it's about. And that's and, and that's it. Uh, I don't want to brag. I don't want to, um, you know, uh, let it get to my head, <laughs> yeah. as it has with a lot of people. Um, I think I will try and work with. Them. Um, as a humble servant for the people of Kenya uh, with integrity. Um, my, my, my fear is that I'm, I might not be able to deliver. Um, Why is that? No, no, I'm saying, I'm, I'm afraid that, okay. no, not that, sorry, maybe I need to rephrase. Uh, my, my fear is that, um, what if I don't deliver? But I'm determined, and, and I think, and I believe that I will, because there's a, there's a change. Uh, and, and, and now I've been in government for quite a while yeah. uh, but there's, there's a determination now well we wish you the very best thank you so much for joining us on Checkpoint so we will watch yeah. and hope you succeed thank you. for the sake of justice for all Kenyans who are hoping that you know in all kinds of scenarios that you're investigating and looking into prosecuting that in fact justice is served and seen to be served. And thank you for watching. That's it for Checkpoint. I'm Sophia Wanuna, and we want to thank Crown Plaza for hosting us where we filmed this interview.